Hello students, welcome back once again to your channel. In this video, we shall be discussing another poem from your ICC syllabus. This is the third poem that is prescribed by the council in your syllabus and the name of the poem is Skimble Shanks by none other than T.S. Eliot. Yes, like I always remind you, I have been using this book, Treasure Chest, a collection of ICC poems and short stories published by Evergreen Publications and not any other book. This is the textbook that has been prescribed by the council and you are also expected to use this book only. All right. So, Skimble Shanks, The Railway Cat by T.S. Eliot. But... Before we begin, let me remind you that if you find this video interesting and helpful, please do not forget to give me a like and also remember to subscribe to my channel. It shall keep me motivated. Alright, so Skimble Shanks, The Railway Cat by T.S. Eliot. Uh, let us look at page 9, children, uh, a little bit about the poet. Okay, Thomas Turns Eliot, born on 26 September 1888, and he passed away on 4th January 1965. He was born in Missouri, but he moved to England at the age of 25 and became a British citizen. So he was an American by birth, but became an English citizen. We come down a little uh, down in the second last paragraph. Eliot wrote the cat poems in the 1930s and included them under his assumed name, Old Possum, that is his pen name. In letters to his godchildren, Eliot loved cats and owned many during his life. He was fond of giving them peculiar names, that is unusual names, such as Jelly Lorem, Petty Paws, Whiskers, and George Push Dragon. Skimble Shanks is a character in Andrew Lloyd Webber's 1981 musical Cats, which is based on Eliot's book. The character is portrayed as a bright and energetic orange tabby cat who lives and works on the night mails, that is the night train. All right. So, Skimble Shanks, the railway cat. Let's see. There's a whisper down the line at 11.39 when the night mail is ready to depart. Saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble? We must find him or the train can't start. So, there is a whisper down the line at 11.39. The train, the train is supposed to, the night mail is supposed to live at 11.39. And where does the night mail travel? The night mail travels from London to Scotland through Britain. So there's a whisper down the line at 11.39. So there's a lot of murmuring and restlessness among the passengers of the railway, uh, this thing, of the night mail. When the night mail is ready to depart, the night mail is ready to depart, and what are the people mumbling and murmuring about? They are saying, where is Kimble? People are looking for him. Okay, has he gone to hunt the thimble? Now, hunt the thimble is actually a children's game in which the players look for a hidden treasure. Okay, it's a children's game. So, uh, uh, we have to understand this right in the beginning of the poem. The poet makes it very clear that Skimble is not just any other cat. It is a very, very important persona. Okay? And therefore, the night mail cannot leave without Skimble being around. Alright? We must find him or the train can't start. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughter, they are searching high and low, saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? For unless he's very nimble then the night mail just can't go. So everyone gets worked up. Be it the guards, be it the porters, porters, we, uh, we, we, uh, we will get a few helpers 
on the railway platform who help us to carry our luggage. They are porters, okay? And the station master's daughters, they have all become worked up because Kimball is nowhere to be found. They are searching high and low in every possible place he is being searched for. Saying, Skimble, where is Skimble? For unless he is very nimble, then the night mail just can't go. Nimble means quick and fast. So, until and unless Skimble is very quick and fast in reporting here, the train just cannot start. At 11.42, when the signal is nearly due, and the passengers are frantic to a man, then Skimble will appear and he'll saunter to the rear. He's been busy in the luggage van. So at 11.42, the signal is ready for the night mail to depart. And all the passengers are frantic. Frantic means distraught with anxiety. People are extremely worried. Where is Skimble? The train is about to leave the station. Then Skimble appears. And where, where does he appear from? He, he, he just doesn't appear. He saunters. Saunters means to walk in a relaxed manner. Then Skimble will appear and he'll saunter to the rear, to the front of the train. He's been busy in the luggage van. So, he's been busy in the luggage van. He's been supervising the luggage van. So, initially what was thought of Skimble? Initially it was thought that Skimble is... Somewhere busy playing the game of thimble. But no, it is not that. He, on the contrary, had been extremely responsible and had been supervising the luggage van. He gives one flash of his glass green eyes. Glass green eyes, alliteration. And the signal goes all clear. And we are off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere. So one signal from his eyes. Glass green eyes and the signal is evident that yes, the night mail is now ready to leave. And we are off at what at uh, off at last for the northern part. Northern part is northern part of Britain. Northernmost part of Britain. Off the northern hemisphere. This I feel is an ex exaggeration or an hyperbole. Because again, your uh, rhetorical device, because how can a train go to the extreme part of the northern hemisphere? Anyway, the poet feels it in that way. But then this is an exaggeration. Alright? So, Skimble is not just any other cat. He is a very, very important entity. And the cat is extremely important a persona. Okay? He is extremely responsible. We may say, you may say that by and large, it is Kimball who is in charge of the sleeping car express. From the driver and the guards to the bagman playing cards, he will supervise them all more or less. So, what does Kimball do? From the driver and the guards to the bagman playing cards, he will supervise them all. So, he does the work of monitoring. Down the corridor, he paces and examines all the faces of the travellers in the first and the third. So, he walks down, up and down, okay, in the various compartments. And then he supervises, he ensures that everybody is having a comfortable journey or not. So, you see, as a figure of authority, he is so concerned about the welfare of the people traveling by the night mail that he does not differentiate between the first class and the third class. So, you know, he's supervising and he's ensuring that everyone is comfortable. So, Skimble is coming across here as an authoritative figure, as a person holding a chair of responsibility. But... And also as someone who does not differentiate between the high class and the low class. That's why he travels in both the first and the third class compartments. Okay. He establishes control by a regular patrol. Patrol is a war. He establishes control by a regular patrol. And he would know at once if 
anything occurred. So he's very alert. He will watch you without winking. Watch you without winking? Alliteration. And he sees what you're thinking. So Skimble is extremely alert, observant, intelligent, and a shrewd judge of character. He leaves no stone unturned to remain on his toes always so as to avoid any sort of problem. And it's certain that he doesn't approve of hilarity and riot. So the folk are very quiet when Skimble is about and on the move. So Skimble is a person who is very, very serious. Okay. Uh, you see here, Skimble, despite being a cat, is given all human-like attributes, all human-like qualities. Okay. The cat. So he is so serious about his work that he does not uh, pro, does not allow hilarity. Hilarity means merrymaking. He does not give indulgence in riot, too much of laughter. So people are extremely quiet, okay? When Skimble is about and on the move. Now this, I wish to draw your attention on the previous page, on page 10. Okay? There is a place where, uh, you know, uh, first stanza, you see, there's a whisper down the line at 11.39 when the ninth male is ready to depart. So it has been an, a moment of restlessness and murmuring among the passengers. So also here, you see in the first stanza itself, the third last line and the passengers are frantic to a man. So there was, the, the, everyone was distraught with anxiety. There was utter chaos. Compare this in the presence of Skimble. There is absolute calmness among the passengers because Skimble does not allow, does not give indulgence to hilarity and riot. Okay. You can play no pranks with Skimble Shanks. So he's a no-nonsense person. He's a cat that cannot be ignored. His presence is meant to be felt. So nothing goes wrong on the Northern Mail when the Skimble Shanks is abroad. So you see, the, uh, the train is referred multiple times by multiple names. It is the Night Mail, then it is the Northern Mail now, and then it is also the Sleeping Car Express because it leaves late in the night. Okay? Oh, it's very pleasant when you have found your little den with your name written up on the door. Your den refers to the railway cabin. So this is not just any train, but an extremely luxurious one. So we will see how the train is a luxurious one. The facilities provided in the train will now be given out. Oh, it's very pleasant when you have found your little den. So there is a cabin provided with your name written up on the door. And the berth is very neat with a newly folded sheet. New, neat with a newly folded sheet is again an alliteration. So everything is pick and span and uh, the uh, bed sheets that are provided are also extremely neat. And there is not a speck of dust on the floor. So everything is prim and proper. Why? Because who's been supervising all of it? Skimble shines. That is every sort of light. You can make it dark or bright. There is a perfect light. There's a handle that you turn to make a breeze. There's a fu funny little basin you're supposed to wash your ha face in. And a crank. Crank is a handle to shut the window if you sneeze. So these are the facilities provided by the night mail. It's a luxurious one. Then the guard looks in politely and will ask you very brightly. Do you like your morning tea? Weak or strong? So even the guards on the train are extremely humble. Okay, they are not rude. They are speaking to you in an extremely polite and gentle manner, asking you what is your preference for tea? Would you like it weak or strong? Why? Because it is everything is supervised by Skimble. They, they are all answerable to Skimble. So Skimble is not just any other cat, a very, very important figure of authority. But Skimble is just behind him and was ready to remind him for Skimble won't let anything go wrong. So 
even though the guard ends up asking, would you like your tea uh, strong or weak, Skimble is already there, right at the back of the guard, reminding him, no, this person likes the tea strong or that person likes the tea weak. So he is a person, Skimble is a person who wouldn't like anything to go wrong. So here we come across Skimble as a perfectionist. So we've seen Skimber as an alert, observant, intelligent and a shrewd judge of character. We now see him as a perfectionist and we have also seen him as a figure of authority who is concerned with the welfare of everybody on the nightmare. He does not differentiate or distinguish between the rich and the poor. And when you creep into your cozy berth, again an alliteration, and pull up the counterpane, counterpane is a decorative bed cover, you ought to reflect that it's very nice to know that you won't be bothered by mice. There would be no rats on the train. Why? Because Kimball is constantly on the round. You can leave all that to the railway cat, the cat of the railway train. You see, the cat has been written with capital C, which brings out the importance of the cat on the train. In the watches of the night, he is always fresh and bright. So he is never tired. Okay. Every now and then he has a cup of tea with perhaps a drop of scotch. Scotch is, of course, wine while he's keeping on the watch. So he's extremely alert and to remove his drowsiness, what does he do? He drinks tea quite often and at times even with scotch. Only stopping here and there to catch a flea. Flea is a parasitic insect. Okay, So Skimble is such a perfectionist that he wouldn't let an insect also to, you know, trouble the passengers. You were fast asleep at crew and so you never knew that he's walking up and down the station. You were sleeping all the while he was busy at Carlisle where he greets the station master with elation. So these are names of places, crew, Carlisle. These are all, uh, well, these are names of various stations where the night mail stops. So the passengers must have been sleeping, but Skimble Shines had been doing his work diligently. He greets the station master with a lot of happiness. He walks on up, up and down the station. But you saw him at Dumfries, again the name of the place, where he speaks to the police. If there is anything they ought to know about. So even he, you know, works as a messenger for the police. When you get to Gallowgate, name of a place, there you do not have to wait for Skimble Shanks will help you to get out. So he will... He gets down and opens the gate for you. He gives you a wave of his long brown tail which says, I will see you again. So in other words, a Skimble Shanks is a cat which is extremely, you know, homely, welcoming, humble. And he ensure, with the waving of its tail, it ensures that the passengers must have had a happy and relaxed journey and he's looking forward to host them again. You will meet without fail on the midnight mail, the cat of the railway train. Again, the cat with capital C, which brings out how dependable the our Skimble Shanks is, how courteous our Skimble Shanks is and what a philanthropic cat it is. So that is the poem on a very simple poem but then again do you really think Skimble Shanks is a cat and the poet uh, of such a stature would be writing a poem only on a cat? Certainly not children. You have to understand Skimble Shanks stands for a symbol. Symbol of or rather symbol for all those people who are holding chair, important chairs of responsibility in our society. How Skimble Shanks does his work with diligence, with perfection, with efficiency. Okay, that is what expected of our leaders in society. Okay, they are expected also to be such 
a perfectionist, such a diligent worker, such a truth, uh, such a true and honorable leader. All right. So, therefore, apparently, the poet might seem as a fantasy, but it stands. Or rather, it is a metaphor for all the perfectionists that we have in society. It examines the role of people holding chairs of responsibility in society. That these people are elected by us, the common man, in hope that they would be, you know, taking care of our welfare. They would be honest. They would be loyal. And they would be, you know, not be distinguishing between the rich and the poor and would ensure philanthropic activities across the various strata of society. All right. So this is the poem for you children. If you find, if you find this video helpful, kindly do not forget to give me a like. And also do not forget to subscribe to my channel. It shall keep me motivated. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye and have fun.